Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Brandon Up, and today I'm going to be talking about five tips on how to use a fisheye lens to film BMX. Jesus, oh, dude! Holy shit. So, tip number one is going to be to get close. A fisheye lens makes your field of view a lot wider than normal, so don't be afraid to get close. If you're standing too far away, the rider's going to end up looking really small, and that essentially defeats the purpose of using a fisheye in the first place. Depending on your setup, generally you want to be a few feet away. I'd probably recommend around three to five feet, somewhere around there when you're starting out. Some fisheyes are going to be wider than others. The wider the fisheye, the closer you're going to need to be. I generally find the wider fisheyes are going to be a lot more useful, just because you're going to be able to stand in tighter situations and spots where you don't have much room behind you. Don't get too close to where you're chopping off the head and feet of the rider, but don't be afraid to get right up in the action. The goal is to fill the frame with the rider. Since you're so close, however, you gotta be aware that you are now in the danger zone. Be very conscious if the rider's bailing though, because they or the bike can come crashing into you. That can lead to not the best results. <laughs> Completely missed the pop. I should've told you you're in danger zone, but... Tip two is to get low. The point of a fisheye is to exaggerate certain elements. When you're low, everything above it seems bigger. This is a great way to make airs look taller and drops look huge. Most of the time, you're gonna wanna be pretty low, and sometimes even ground level, depending on the obstacle that you're filming. The reason that I say most of the time is because if you're too low, things can start to look a little weird. I'll touch up on that later in the video. If you can, try to use a top handle because it'll help you get those low angles without having to crouch into awkward positions or lay on the ground. Personally, I use one by Small Rig. This one was about 40 bucks. If you don't wanna spend that much, these are like 15 bucks, generally pretty universal. There's a perfect spot for a microphone right here, and then your camera just goes right here. I used one of these for a while before upgrading. They're fine. They're perfect for starting out. If your camera has a tilt out or flippy screen, that's going to help you get those low angles because you're going to be able to look down and see what you're recording. If not, it's not the end of the world, but you are going to be guessing more in the beginning before you naturally start to understand where to point your camera. There are exceptions to this rule, however. I have noticed that some tech tricks, especially foot jams and tire taps, look a little better when you film from above. Experiment and see what works best for your situation. If you're just shooting really casual footage, like vlogging, getting low is just unnecessary though, and it might actually make your footage look really funny. Tip number three is gonna be to shoot from the right angle. There's a few different parts to this one. If you're filming from a certain angle and it's not working or looking the best, it's probably not the right one. For example, the same trick shot from straight on versus from the side is gonna look really different. Figure out what works best for your clip. Clips should be filmed from different angles depending on which way the rider spins or what side they do the tricks on. Generally, you wanna be filming in such a way that you see the face of the rider during the clip because you don't want those butt shots, unless, you know, that's what you're into. Don't hold the camera in just one place. You're gonna wanna pan it from side to side or up and down. If you're filming a trick or line that benefits from not just standing in one place, you have a few options. One, you can skateboard, which a lot of people do and it works great. I can't skateboard though. You can also get a steady cam or gimbal. Those are awesome. I have friends who use those and produce awesome footage with them, but it's just a little too much for me. A little too much gear to pack. I personally just like to utilize the ninja walk method. The ninja walk is just sort of when you crouch over and take careful steps. It really helps stabilize the footage compared to if you were just standing up and holding the camera normally. Just make sure that you're doing it as smooth as possible though. If you're not smooth, you're gonna be applying a lot of warp stabilizer in the post, which makes your footage look weird all over again. If you use a top handle though, it should help stabilize the footage anyways. If you're just holding the camera like this, whether it be both hands or one hand, your body starts to get tired and your muscles start to fatigue, causing shake. If you're holding the handle like this and your camera body is right here, gravity plus the weight of your camera helps stabilize and you just don't get as tired, meaning less shake. Here are some basic tips to help you get started. Grinds are gonna look best from the middle of the rail or ledge. An exception to this is if they're doing a trick out. For example, I'll film a double peg on a rail differently than say a double peg to bar spin on a rail or a double peg to 180 on a rail. You're gonna wanna be where the trick is if that makes sense. If you're filming a drop or a stair set, there's a few different ways to go about this. You can't really go wrong with filming it from the top or like a few stairs down from the top. Sometimes I like to film from the ground on a drop. When you film a drop from the ground, it offers this really extreme effect. It kind of reminds me of when a superhero lands and smashes into the ground. When you're doing this, however, you want to make sure that you're not too low to the ground because then you don't see where the rider is coming from. You don't want them to look like they're appearing out of nowhere. Generally, an air trick is going to look good from straight on or slightly from the side. If you film the air where the rider is at the top of the frame, at their peak, it helps accentuate how high they're going. It's pretty hard to mess up these shots. Just please don't film from the bottom of the quarter pipe like some people do. It looks so bad. Tip number four is to set focus. So this one's a little bit smaller of a tip, but I think it can be something that separates your footage from other people's footage. I was told before to just set my focus to infinity and set my aperture to 5.6 or higher and just call it good. Don't 
do that. So this works okay if you're a beginner. It's easier and you don't have to mess with as many settings. And for the most part, people won't really be able to tell a difference, but there are drawbacks to this. Infinite focus is exactly what it sounds like. It focuses on things that are infinitely distant away from you, but how far away is a rider from you? a few feet. If you're always shooting at infinity with a high aperture all the time, yeah, things are going to be more in focus compared to if you were stopped down, but you won't be able to shoot in darker situations because there's going to be less light coming through your lens. If you want the crispiest, crispiest? If you want the most crispy footage, set the focus to the correct distance. It's not that hard, and if you're staying the same distance away from riders for most of your clips, you don't have to change many things anyways. I did the infinity focus thing for so long, so long, years. But one day, I stood three feet away from the rider, set the focus to three feet, and guess what? Sharpest footage I've ever gotten. It matters. Now, not to contradict myself, but sometimes setting the focus to infinity or next to infinity can be the best option depending on your lens. So on this fisheye, you can set the focus anywhere between one foot to 10 feet pretty precisely. After 10 feet, the next setting would be an infinite. But when you're filming clips, you're probably not gonna be 10 feet away from your rider. So in this case, you're gonna wanna set it precisely. This lens, however, everything after three feet is infinite focus, so if you're always filming three feet or more away, it's not gonna hurt to set it to infinity. If you're filming on a phone with a fisheye, I don't think you can really change these settings because the fisheye is just a clip-on or on a case or something, but hey, now you know this for when you do get a more dedicated camera. The sun decided to come out, so that's why it looks a little brighter in here now. So, tip number five is just to experiment. Be creative, experiment, and see what you like. Have fun doing it. Everything I've said so far should help you get started, but as you start to film more, you'll start to find your own style with it. Fisheye lenses are fun, and they can really enhance the clip and make it look cool, but they're not for everything. Try not to use the fisheye for every situation. Sometimes it's better to shoot with a longer lens. If you shoot everything with a fisheye, it can get a little repetitive, so try to switch it up here and there. Try not to fall into the habit of filming absolutely everything with a fisheye. One of my favorite parts about fisheyes is that generally they're pretty cheap. This one I got brand new for 70 bucks. Been using it for years and I love it. Depending on your camera setup though, you might not be able to get this one. As of right now, you can get something like this for 150 bucks. And if you never break it, you can get awesome footage with this. And there's not really a reason to upgrade afterwards. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm not a pro, but I have been doing this for years now, so I hope you pick something up. If you liked the video, go ahead and give the video a like, and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you think and what you want to see. Let me know if you want to see any more tutorials. This one was honestly pretty hard to film, but I had fun doing it. I'll be back soon. Bye.